So good morning, active traders, and welcome to our Trading the Open Live Room experience for our open house, the first one of the year. I do these every other month, and always a good opportunity to catch up and see what's going on lately and decide if my approach is one that fits your needs. wanted to say thanks to all 1,224 of you for registering. It's always good to see an epic turnout. we got lots of great charts to look at, so let's get underway. As always, uh, all information is for educational use only. We're not making advice about what to buy, sell, or hold. And by watching this, you agree to not make actual trades, but rather use a demo or SIM account so you can learn in a safe learning environment in a way that makes sense. Running the room here since August of 2000, it's been quite the run. And I'm deeply honored to have so many of you here today. Here's a quick slide that I put together last week for my regular members, and I just wanted to familiarize all of you with this. I'm not going to read all these things, but just briefly, those are some of the chart patterns we like. Gap continuations, ORBs, open range breakouts, bull flag, or minor cup continuation breakouts, two-day highs, pivots off of prior supports, and just straight momentum runners. One thing that you want to start asking yourself, and let me ask you, and uh, just a quick question, all the hundreds of you here, which of these three timing intervals is your favorite to trade? Do you like <clears throat> doing, a, say, under 10 minute scalps, quick, classic, two, three, four, five, eight minute round trips? Do you want to stay in until the market pivots, whether that's the 10 o'clock pivot or the lunchtime buy or sell programs? or the afternoon, or do you like holding all day long or even longer for swing trades? Which of those three? Type in if you would right now. I'm really interested to see who I'm working with here. we got so many of you here today. Do you like just the classic quick momentum five to ten minute round trip? Well, two or three minute on the short end, a couple of minutes uh, uh, up, uh, or do you like longer term trading? Always interested to see what types of approach each of you have. And by the way, that's a quick tip. You may want to test different time intervals. You don't have to do classic, you know, like large size scalps with thousands of shares for two minutes on a $2 stock and hope it's kind of a gambling approach. I like to advocate a small share, kind of a diverse approach. Step-by-step, step, pre market some of the things you want to start looking for is check the futures, or at least the SPY chart, it's kind of a surrogate to see pre-market what's the direction of the trend and the gap. Also keep an eye on the current pre-market gapping stocks. Pick three or four of them. Which are the previous day's biggest movers? One thing that's unique here about my approach at Trading the Open is I always like to have a watch list in the upper right corner with specific triggers to paper trade to learn from, right? And that's designed to teach you Breakout chart patterns designed to avoid false breakouts. That's my specialty. So if you're a breakout trader or you trade pivots, you want to avoid false breakouts or buying the dip that doesn't run and the other mistakes that you can make and instead have really good, well thought out entries that work out most of the time. Then you just set up your entries in a demo account and take it from there. Just a couple last slides here before we hit the charts. Your progress as a trader, one of the things that can really benefit you, I think, you figure out how to start making it. If you really want to dominate the markets and you want to crush it, you need to be able to follow and trade a few positions like any professional trader does with tight stops and make better use of your time in terms of winning entries and exits for round trips while it's still alive. And you've got unrealized p l where you're playing with the house's money and you're still in the money. You want to close out your trades before the market takes it back. Always be realistic. You want to expect a mix or a blend of wins, stops, and draws each day. And very much it's a numbers game. You've got to make the math work out. As somebody who's been day trading since 99, I can tell you it's all about small stops, risk management, and importantly, very much I say trade wide, not deep. And like a colleague of mine says, trade small, trade often. That makes perfect sense. It's very much a law of large numbers. Speaking of numbers, which I'm all about the math and the numbers, 
as a real trader. I did 2,200 trades, uh, and most of that was October. That like 98% of that was uh, October, November, December. So I've got a lot of experience to share with you. This is a screen cap for my Fidelity account. I did over 2,200 trades uh, in three months. Okay, so I learn a lot to bring to the table. Anyway, speaking of learning a lot, let's take a look at which charts can teach us a lot. The spiders are parked up here at a new high. I've got small stops and for a couple of initial trades I'd put on uh, Friday. So I bought QID and VXX right before the closing bell, right near the day's lows because they looked really cheap. Like famous last words, because uh, they're even cheaper now. So I shouldn't have even traded them at all. But I held them overnight, uh, but only small shares in case they do what they're doing now, which is gapping against me. So I put my stops in for QID and VXX, and it's only 20 shares. Now, what I, one of the things that you'll learn here at Trading the Open, which nowhere else in the world can you learn is a very professional approach to small share size with tight stops as the starting place, kind of like planting a lot of seeds in a garden. And once it don't work out, that's fine. They turn into, into fertilizer. The ones that do work out, they go into mighty oaks. They can be harvested. And so what you want to do as an experienced trader is not do, you know, it's like, hey, this thing's running. Let's trade 5,000 shares and hope it runs even more. And then it goes against you, and then you get stopped out, and you lose $1,000 or $1,200 on one trade. That's not the right way to trade. These kind of charts are great, but should still be traded with caution. Anyway, that's one of our watch list stocks today. Let's take a look at the other, shall we? AKAO looks good for a cheapie. It ran from buck twenty to over 2 on Friday, so for a bounce, I'll see if it gets over, say, 185, 190 for a pivot long. Roku, you can see the thumbnail chart. Wow, it really took off. I'm going to have to readjust my long trigger, right? I picked, I, you know, I picked these like when it was back here. It got on my radar. Should have pre-market traded it, right? Well, that's okay. Speaking of which, all of the alerts that you learn from me here are to be used in market only, so after 9.30. So you're not for pre-market longs. So if you'd been able to get a piece of that, that ran up over point already. Let's bump that up to 37.4. Well, thanks, everybody, for posting. I appreciate it. A question from a trader about stops and limits. I always put a limit order. When I use buy stop limit orders, I put it 20 cents above the current long. So, for example, AXSM, it may run over the 820 pre-market, and if it does, I'll push it up. But if I buy it today, I'll do 100 shares with a buy stop at 820 limit. Actually, with that volatility, I'm no, I'll just do 50 share trade, but I'll put a buy stop 820, limit 840. So 20 cents is the limit that I use. And I always use buy stop orders. I don't just use, never trade market unless uh, you're really keen to get on in on something quickly. What you want to do instead is, you know, trade aggressively with limit orders. Anyway, but yeah, Roku looks good, right? Look at that really big momentum run. That's a perfect breakout. But we don't want to buy it right under a whole number because that's usually where things stall and drop. So it'll very likely drop back down to 36 between now and 930. And that's good. We'll see where it goes. Keep that one on the radar. That's now my new favorite chart of the day, Roku. Remember I said that. Next up to bat, AMD taking out new highs. 19.6 looks good. I pick charts that are so strong, that do so well, such remarkably amazing breakout strength. They will often run through a trigger pre-market, so I always adjust those between now and 9.30. I don't take any of these guys until after the opening bell. Next up to bat, U.S. Steel. The ticker is X. Parked up here nicely above the previous day's high, and the resistance is at 21.30. So I've got a limit, how to say, the 
entry would be over 2150 and I'll buy it over 2150 with a it'll be buy stop 2150 limit 217 okay and IQ is another good one that one of my traders had mentioned to me last week now let's change our attention or switch our attention to my favorite ETFs or exchange traded funds so I like trading those as well in fact I've been trading ETFs more than stocks because of the arbitrage opportunity of trading both directions kind of simultaneously. So if the market goes up, I buy T triple Qs. If the market goes down, I buy a lot of instruments, the uh, VXX, my current favorite, this one, and TVIX and others. So we'll see where it goes. UWT was up here. I'll be interested in buying it if it gets over 11.20 is my long buy order I've got set up. You guys kind of gapping down and dropping down. One of the natural gas. Gas and oil, you guys and degas. And UWT and, and DWT are always, always good charts to look for. Labu is also one of my favorites to go long the market in. I don't particularly love buying things with a 9 in it, so I may wait for it to break over 40. But Labu looks good. These are our long ETFs that skyrocketed up on Friday. T Triple Qs did really good. TNA, another good one. They get progressively less good on the way down here. And on the downside, our inverse ETFs, LA, maybe for pivots, LABD. S triple Q, TVIX. I traded that one quite aggressively, but now that it's dropping, I'm not really interested in it until it reverses course and goes back up. TZA. A lot of these I tried to buy mostly unsuccessfully taking stops. I'm very honest about everything. I, I got uh, lots of itty bitty stops. I didn't take any big stops, but I took a, it's a death of a thousand cuts trying to bottom fish these guys on the way down during the market up on Friday. But I did trade T triple Qs, which is a really nice up chart. So that's our group of charts. And one of the things that you'll learn about as a member here in Trading the Open is a lot of different charts that are designed to give you a variety, kind of like going to a buffet. I'm very much like the buffet. Like going to a great buffet in Vegas, like the Connell Buffet. I, I know the manager. She's a really nice, uh, sweet old lady. And it's a, the Connell Buffet in Vegas is great. Uh, Bellagio's Buffet is great. Caesar's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mandalay Bay's is pretty good too. Anyway, the point is, as a day trader, you really want to feast on a number of different charts. I've done as many as 50 or 60 day trades in a given day. I've done that frequently. I'm trying to cut down because I love trading. That's what I do. You want to take a lot of shots at the market. What you don't do is trade like the inexperienced young guys under 30 trying, uh, they're phonies, right? They're fakers. And they try and say, oh, I'll make thousands of dollars trading one or two stocks each day on thousands of shares. That will absolutely blow up your trading account because you're going to be wrong more often than you're right. So given that, that's okay. I mean, I'm wrong more often than I'm right too. But what you want to do is make it up by getting small size on the ones that you're wrong in. So if you take stops, you know, and say 50 shares uh, and it goes, you know, 20 cents against you, that's like $10, right? That's not much money. For 50 shares, it goes 30 cents against you. That's $15 plus the commission. So 20, 25 bucks. Your cost of being wrong as a day trader should never be more than, on average, maybe $100 or so maximum per trade. There's something deeply, horribly, awfully wrong if you're taking stop losses that are, say, three or five or six or eight hundred dollars on a single trade. That's a completely boneheaded way to trade. You know, like my colleague Tom Sosnov, who's a brilliant, you know, co-founder of Thinkorswim, and he runs Tasty Trade. And my favorite guy to learn from is Sosnov because he knows what the heck he's talking about, and he talks about risk management. And he says, trade small, trade often. 
That's completely right. He's a former Chicago CBOE floor trader. He knows what he's talking about. He's the real deal. Trade small, trade often. Those are words to live by. And if you're an options trader, be sure to go to tastytrade.com. It's like a free plug for a guy that I really respect and admire. Anyway, another two great options traders are Price Healy at Big Trends and Larry uh, McMillan at, uh, at his site. But anyway, the point is, trade with granularity, trade with specificity, and make sure that you've got focus and clarity on the chart patterns that work out. Make sure that you're really clear on why you're getting into a trade, which patterns can help you make money the most often, the most frequently. I'm an expert. I'm the world's foremost expert in gap and breakout continuation trades. You may have seen my trading on momentum column in every month's issue of Stocks and Commodities magazine at www.traders.com uh, every month for years now. And I like to have these, you know, bite-sized, actionable, based on real money trade experience lessons learned. So be sure to subscribe to Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities magazine if you're not yet subscribed. It's a great value. I mean, for the price of a the two or three year subscription, that's like the cost of a stop loss, a stop loss. You get a world of knowledge from me and, and hundreds of other contributors. Anyway, AXSM pulling back off the eight hole number. IQ looking kind of smart up here, right under 16.6. US Steel, X marks the spot, baby, and we're up at a two day high in X. We'll see if that guy gets some, some momentum. AMD looks spectacular. That is a wonderful looking chart. I'm going to bump up the long trigger again. And I'll leave it there, 19.7. That's where I wanted it. 19.7 is good. Roku's the single strongest breakout chart that I can find for you. I'm going to adjust this yet one more time because it ran up pretty close to 37.40. We don't want to get stuck in a false breakout, so let's push that up to 37.70. Do remember to join me as a member uh, here. It's always great to see. I've got record high new subscribers, uh, well, at least since the year 2002. Uh, at trading the open, and there's a good reason, right? I like to have a very intelligent, rules-based approach with very concise trading rules, risk management that's really tight, and an approach that makes sense. Anyway, thanks so much to all of you for being here. Market opens any minute now, well, in about 12 minutes from now. I'm interested to see which of these kind of gets legs and continues throughout the day and not just here pre-market, but actually who has good momentum and good volatility and good trading odds to make a successful set of trades for all of you. I'm very much a trader's advocate. That's my USP or what differentiates me. I'm not the guy out there claiming to make you a fortune overnight trading cheap stocks. That's the exact opposite of the correct professional's approach. I'm always asking myself, you know, how can I make money in the market each day? Well, the spread, a question from a trader, what's the volume and the spread? Well, look at and answer it yourself. What's the volume and what's the spread? The volume is obviously right here, and the spread is obviously right here in the tape. So pre-market, you can see the spread is a couple, three cents. Volume is really good, around 20,000 shares and up per minute. So we got really good volatility. Hey, Polly, let's see, HPQ. Question about where do I put a stop once I'm in? Well, it, it depends on a few factors. There's never, by the way, folks, when you're day trading, there is no spreadsheet, plug and play numbers that are consistent. 
every day in terms of risk management and the rest of it. It's a multivariate puzzle to solve. If we're in an up market, you know, we're in a long bias market and it's early in the session, say between 9.30 and 10, and we're at a two-day high gap continuation, uh, I will likely trade larger share size and use uh, still relatively tight stops. Well, let's say tight to medium stops of, you know, 20, 30 cents or so. If it's later in the session, say after 10 o'clock, where the S&P is a mid-range or down day and I'm looking to play longs or inverse ETFs at new highs, uh, then I may consider the time of day, uh, the previous chart pattern, the two-day chart, uh, the relative strength of the S&P compared to the previous day's session. All those things go into helping you decide your risk management and your initial share size. That's one thing, too, that so many people fail to teach traders uh, because they're not real traders. They're just posers. By the way, most of the day trading educators are bullshitters and con men. They're not real traders. I'm a real trader, right? I mean, I'm the guy who traded over 2,000 trades in the last three months alone and has the proof and the commissions to, to back it up, all right? Who else in the entire trading industry like I say, make sure you look for the amount of actual commission dollars that the educator is paid. Sim accounts obviously don't have real commissions. I, I trade live real money accounts, so I do. Anyway, the point is I've got a bucket load of experience to share with you guys. One of the things you really want to do is, you know, like I say, it's a multivariate puzzle to solve. You, so deciding how many shares to trade depends on a few factors, the time of day, the exact chart pattern, uh, the relative strength of that chart compared to the broad market and other charts that I'm considering, and many other things. And that also applies to the place at which we set stops. There's a, so there's never, so long, long story, long answer to short question, but uh, deciding where to place your stops uh, and how many shares to go in is something that's uniquely different depending on time of day, the chart pattern, relative strength, uh, the rest of it. And so that's what I cover here in the live room. And that's the best way to learn is to, you know, be here so you can look over my shoulder each day and uh, I'll tell you exactly where I put my stop and how I'm managing the trades from start to finish with all the live real money trades I'm doing. I'm going to put in a couple of orders here. I'm putting in the Roku 50 shares, just 50. It's Monday morning, so Mondays are generally kind of a, the market's waking up, so we want to be cautious on the front end. So I just put in a 50 share buy stop order for Roku 37.7, limit 37.90. I'll show you all my orders here in just a minute. Let me finish typing these into my trader's workstation. Active Trader Pro. Fidelity Station. So it's pretty well thought out. It's well designed. I like it. Normally I use interactive brokers, but I'm working on my Fidelity account now. So I'm perfectly comfortable with the idea of buying this in 19.7. Limit 19.9. And the reason I set up my orders kind of right before the opening bell is because often these guys will start to run with the momentum run in market. And what we don't want to do is kind of chase it with hotkeys and market orders. That's an amateur's approach. A professional approach is well thought out with specific order flow set up before the opening bell. Ask any floor trader, ask any market maker. I do because they used to come to my live seminars in Vegas and New York when I used to do them. Anyway, and kind of almost invariably, the ones that I don't set a trigger for are the ones that run without me. So. 
trying to get these all set up. And I asked myself, does this entry make sense? Is the chart pattern strong enough to justify me risking my hard-earned dollars? You know, and you ask yourself, when you're trading live, which charts have the best odds? So I'm putting in just a sequence of 50 share trades, and I'll show them to you for proof in just a second here. Opening bell is imminent. Our stock market opens soon here. We want to see which way things are going to run. So this is 100% of my orders. So I have a couple of tight stops on my inverses that I held overnight that are going against me. And I got a sequence of 50 share orders in at UWT, Roku, AMD, X, IQ. I haven't yet put in orders for AXSM or the TQs. I need to put in the TQs order right now. Let me go ahead and get that in. That's my promise to myself. I like to work the order flow in the inverses a lot, but On up days, there's frequently, hey, if I just bought, you know, a couple hundred shares of TQQ and let it ride, I'd be much better off on the day. So Putting in an order right now at 39.20 for 50 shares of T triple Qs. And you always want to position size. How many of you, I'm just curious, how many of you, show of hands, do use position sizing or scaling? How many of you add to winning trades? Whenever I speak at my money show events, which I miss speaking at, I haven't done one of those in a, a year or so, but highly recommend them. Be sure to go to the Money Show Traders Expos and talk to the other traders. That's the biggest thing I like. Uh, I mean, it's always great to talk with colleagues too, but talk to other traders and see where they're at. How are they doing? Okay, so I just put the order in for TQs. Okay, a handful of you starting to say yes. Whenever I ask that question live in my audience is a money show, I have hundreds of people out there in the audience, I'll ask, and I usually get only about 20 or 30% of the audience for what it's worth. So, and that's fine. I mean, that's one thing I like to teach you here at Trading the Open that no one else teaches that I know of is position sizing and scaling and adding to winning trades. That makes a lot of sense. So, the first thing you want to ask yourself is what's the broad market sentiment? What's going on here? as the stock market starts to open. You can see the spiders are starting to spike up. We got a long bias stock market, so we want to see where the opportunities are coming up right now. Ding, 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 ding. Game on. See which of these charts is starting to move early. My stop loss in my VXX is at 4320. 
I'm only in 20 shares, so I think around 44, 20, 44, 30. So I'll take a one point stop on 20 shares. That's only a $20 stop loss if it keeps going down. One thing to pay careful attention to is the color of the percent change from open in the instrument you're trading and also in the broad market, the SPY or the S&P. So our spiders are red on the open here. That's important. Let's follow up with these charts. Where are they at? AXSM. AMD pulling back, Roku's pulling back, X pulling back here too. So none of these longs are starting to move yet, except IQ is starting to run up. 16.8 is my long trigger. I will set up a, a sell order. I use both the workstation and my browser order entry thing. The first thing you do when you get an order fill is put in your stop loss. So if I do buy 50 shares, if this goes over 16.8, I'll automatically be buying 50 shares. And the first thing I will do is put in a stop loss. Now on a 50 share trade bought at 16.80, I'd use 16.50 as my initial stop. So I've got that order set up that I will enter if I do get the order fill up at the 16.8. If it doesn't fill and if it just drops from here and crashes and burns, that's fine. I dodged a bullet. What I want is for it to take out new highs it shake a little bit and then continue on up to say 17 and higher. And then if it gets over 1720, 1730, I'll add another 50 shares. But if it just kind of chops around, then I, I will not do that. So. so in anticipation of the order flow running your favor, always make sure you know what you're doing. Roku's starting a spike. So I, I've got a question for you. If you got long at Roku, 50 shares at 37.7, where would you put your initial stop? You make the call. Where would you put the stop? I'll tell you my answer, where I'm actually putting my stop. I'm in the process of typing that out now. But if Roku keeps going up, I'll be a buyer of it over 37.7. So my VXX, I took a little 20, 20 share stop on that one. It looks like order got filled. So that's a small stop in Roku. I'm sorry, small stop in VXX. Roku's not hit yet. In the meantime, T triple Q's does look like it's taking off to new highs. So our question is, do you feel lucky? Would you go on long right this second? I wouldn't because I don't buy right under previous day's highs. Though from a momentum standpoint, you know, any new high in here may make sense. I personally will not be a buyer of this unless it breaks well over 38.8. And my long trigger is set up at 39.20. Because when it runs, look at it on Friday. It ran from 35 to 38.80. So it had a three, almost a four point run. So I don't jump the gun because you often get false breakouts. And that's what you're seeing right here. See, newbie traders would have just bought into this candle. 
my order flow is set up to not get in until and unless it breaks over 39.20 later. So patience, grasshopper. Looks like my IQ got filled. From a tape reading perspective, what you look for is continuity and see if it's able to keep running. Now I'm putting a stop loss in, is it 16? It's really tight. And I may take a stop on this. My stop loss on IQ is 1650. So I took a small stop in my overnight VXX 20 share position, under $50 stop loss, so it's pretty cheap. I did get filled on my 50 shares of IQs at 1680, which is what it's currently trading at now. You can look at time and sales and see that. And I put a sell stop order in at 1650. So I'll use a 30 cent stop on 50 shares. And do the math, that's only $15 plus commissions. Total cost of being wrong in the trade is under $30. I always like to buy strength as an experienced trader. So you're always looking for good trade opportunities like this one that go to the moon, baby. Boom, flawless victory. Well, thanks, JQ, about that one. Roku's also looking good, baby. We're going to see if this guy rocks and rolls over 37.7. Currently at 37.50, 50-ish. If we break north of the 37.7, I'll get the order fill. And I hope we do because I want to see it run to 40 or something. I always constantly click the refresh button in my browser there to see which orders I'm in. Anyway, do you see how it's taken out a new high? My long trigger is to only go long if it gets over 37.70. Looks like I dodged a bullet. It nudged up to within a penny of that, but didn't break over it yet. It may still well do that, but for now, it's kind of parked up here at a two-day high. And when you follow time and sales, is one thing I teach a lot is tape reading. I'm the original tape reading expert widely imitated, never duplicated, uh, that's taught traders for the last 20 years how to use time and sales. What you look for is, from a tape reading perspective, and I teach this in my live room all the time when we have selected charts, we look for the order flow. And I have a nice, big, clean, easy to read tape, right? You want to see exactly where orders are going off at the bid and the ask. Like Bob had asked, what's the spread? So is it something that hopefully has less than a nickel of a spread, which this guy does? Is the volume healthy? Uh, what's the sizes in balance with the bid times the ask? Longs are coming in if you have a lot of large numbers on the left, like 50 times 5 or 100 times 3. That means you have bidders that are out doing the sellers. The buyers are out doing the sellers when the numbers on the left of this Number X number are larger. Most of the time it's kind of indeterminate and choppy. So that's why we don't trade it until we have an imbalance of sizes that's in our favor that clearly tells us the, the longs are in, in play. What's going on with our wide world of ETS? Anybody hot there? Labu looks pretty healthy. A little bit late to the long party, but it may be worth the shot. One thing we like to look at is our swing trading chart. And 
And you can see it's starting to break out over that 22 SMA line, right? That's the green line. I'm going to buy after a pullback. And put it in just a 30 share order if it keeps running on up. I'm going to put it in at 41.8. Because I think it may be due for a pullback any second now. So, And if that's the case, I don't want to buy the high of the day. Having done that thousands of times, it's frustrating. And as a guy who's learned a few things about this uh, we like to avoid buying the high of days so what i'd like is a pullback kind of a bull flag or a bullish cup and then a continuation so i put in a buy stop order to get in over 41.80 Watch that be the top of the day. Sometimes you got to try a couple of times to get the, the trade right. And retries are one thing. I'm not a big fan of doing too many retries because being on the wrong side of that, you just have death of a thousand cuts. But what you want to do is be in correctly and do give it a couple of tries sometimes. I'll put a stop at 40.8 on that. If this does take me out. So I'll be buying it if it gets over What good charts I cover here for you, right? Spectacular breakouts. And, you know, when you're looking for which charts... Pardon me while I'm putting in this order ahead of time to get me out of it. If it goes against me, having I don't think I've gotten filled yet. Let me take a look. I got filled on the Roku. So I'm currently long 50 shares Roku, and I'm long 50 shares of IQ. I put in a stop on Roku at 36.8. It's about a point down from where it's currently at. And my stop on IQ is at 1650, which is... Looks like it's about to hit. So my IQ may stop out. Roku, I'm not in yet. Now, one thing that's unique to trading the open is I like to put these thumbnail charts in here for you so you can see where things are running. Roku continues on up in our favor. Cha-ching. Flawless victory. Eh. buying strength in charts like this that have exceptional volatility and really good continuity is really important to your success as a trader how much money could you have made had you taken my 37.7 long it's currently 40 cents in the money if i were in like a thousand shares i'd be putting a stop right near break even
Start looking at the minute by minute progression from a price action standpoint. As a trader, what you're looking to do is capitalize on these runs in charts that have really good buying pressure. And really what I found really works best in our current markets is and if almost everything is somewhat volatile, you really want to kind of cherry pick out the very best high volatility patterns that make sense. You see how it spiked up here? Now it looks like it's trying to rest right near the 38. This is Roku. My stop loss on Roku, because I want to give it a little bit of breathing room, is 36.8. Let's see where this guy goes. Who else is starting to run? T triple Qs is starting to, to to break out to new highs. I'm going to tighten up my long trigger to 38.85 on this. And the reason for that is that's just a nickel over the high. I like the pattern here. It's trying to take out a new two-day high. 38.80 is the current resistance in this chart. So I'll be a buyer of it if it gets over 38.85. Looks like my Labu got filled at 41.80. Putting a stop in at 40.8. I'm in this chart. So T triple Q's is headed up. I like this pattern. It's about to hit my long trigger. VXX I got stopped out in. 20 share stop. I don't, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. I like this T triple Q pattern. This is the way my single favorite instrument to trade the stock market long. It's a, let's see the complete title, Pro Shares Ultra Pro Q's. I haven't been filled yet. Now I use 38.85 because I anticipated this is really good advanced and a ninja level day trading stuff because look at this. If I had just bought the 38.80, it'll probably still work out, but I didn't. My long trigger is up at 38.85, which is just out of reach. It looks like it just touched it, but didn't get over it. So I didn't get a fill and that's fine. I'm happy with that. In fact, I prefer that because I like buying after a pullback that then continues up and dodging a bullet in case it doesn't go up. So that's good. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to rebuy my VIX. Since I'm day trading it now, I'm not going to just do a 20 share trade. I'm going to put in a little more size. What do you guys think makes sense on this? I still like my trigger 44.7. That's kind of kind of high up just a little bit. I'm going to do 44.15. Now this is a risky trade and it may well stop me out, but it's only 50 shares. So I'm putting in a buy stop at 44.15, limit 44.30 for five zero shares of VXX. And I will sell 30 of the 50. I'm not going to stop out of the entire position. I'm going to sell 30 of the 50. If that ever, if that order ever hits, which it might, it might or it might not. We'll see. I'll sell 30 of it if I get the order fill, and then it goes back down. I say 43.60. That's about a 55 cent stop on 30 shares. 20 bucks, right? That's one thing that you'll learn as a member here, for those of you not yet members, is, and thanks to all, we we're, we're like over 1,100, 1,200 people who registered for today. I like to have a relatively tight risk management approach, and that's one thing that I advocate, rather than just one or two clumsy 2,000 share trades and hope, that's a gamble. That's not, you know, what you want is to, Instead, do a much more tight, precision approach. And have patterns that you know work out. I tend to not like to buy dips like VXX, but I will buy it if it gets over 44.15. In the meantime, oh, I'm kind of glad I, I didn't get filled in the TQs because it's going back down. Labu, which I am long in 30 shares, is headed back down. My stop loss in Labu is 30 shares at 40.8 because I don't want to ride it if it goes down to 37. So looks like I will probably take a stop in that. And that's okay. You have to be philosophical about, about this kind of thing. Yeah, that's why I play both the long and the short ETFs. So here, friends, is my order book so far today. So I did get filled on the VIX, right? I bought, I bought 50 VXXs. Looks like my AMD got filled too. So first thing I'm gonna do is put in the, the stop on the VXXs. AMD I got filled on, but it looks like it's going against me. Looks like I bought the high of the day. It happens all the time, by the way. When you're a breakout trader, you end up buying high of days a lot. The, the thing that differentiates successful from less successful approaches is managing the risk on the downside. So the price that proves this trade wrong would be, say, 1930. So that's where I'm putting... My stop is just a 40 cent stop, which is $20, right? 
on 50 shares. 1930, that's the price I think proves the trade wrong. I think that's the, the best thing that I can contribute to you as a trader and to the trading industry in general is to teach you guys how to take really tight stops. If I were running a brick and mortar day trading university, this guy's kind of interesting for a potential pivot. I'm going to buy just 50 shares if it gets over 6.65. Visually, that's a mean reversion bounce play that may make sense. But anyway, my point is the thing I can contribute best to your progress as a trader is not only finding a variety. Number one is a variety of charts to work with. But number two is how to manage risk on those charts. Okay, so I just put the order in for that. We try to avoid pivots a lot of the time. We like to trade more aggressively on the strongest charts once they're in play. I'll stop out of my VXX if it goes to 43.60. As a trader, let me ask you, what's your your average? Well, it's a what what's a stop loss? How many of you like the idea of using break-even stops? Which I categorize most of these are because they're under 30 or 50 shares. Looks like my IQ got to stop, right? So I did buy the breakout in IQ because so it looked good at the time, right? Kind of famous last words, but I took a stop loss in it. I think that's the one thing I can contribute to your progress, progression as a trader or your progress as a day trader is teaching you how to take extremely inexpensive small stops in addition to finding great charts that when they work out can potentially do really well. I want you to pay careful attention to this. I got stopped out in this chart. What's relevant is how little it cost me. Look at this. And these are real money trades. You can see I bought 50 shares of IQ for $840. I sold them back for $824. That's a $16 stop loss. The price of a decent lunch. $16 was my cost of being wrong in the trade. These are all 100% of my orders today. So what I hope that you can learn from me is really, now this might be good for balance, but I'm not going to take it because the range isn't there. What I can teach you that can be of most value to you personally as a trader is combining this approach where you have good charts that make sense to trade and they look they look great at the time, uh, but if it, they don't work out, you know, a $16 stop loss, I don't mind. That's a very inexpensive cost of being wrong in the trade. Of course, what I want is for ones like my AMD position to keep running up. My stop on this is where? 1930. So I paid uh, 19.7. So I, I did end up buying the high of day in this, which will occur from time to time. But the cost of being wrong, again, is going to be 40 cents times 50 shares is 20 bucks. Nowhere else in the world can you learn this very correct, intelligent way to trade. And, of course, Roku continues to run up like a champ for me. Muhaha. Flawless victory.
I want to add to Roku if it keeps running up. I bought it at 37.7. I'm now going to tighten in my stop to a dime above that 37. Actually, yeah, 37.80. How many of you got Roku? Nailed it, baby. Boom. He shoots. He scores. The crowd goes wild. Another exclusive here. Now, if I were a large size, I'd trail a stop at 38.25. Okay, that's my official exit call. It's 38.25. Now, nowhere else in the world can you get this kind of call where I give you such good alerts. And when I'm wrong, it doesn't cost much trading the size I trade, at least. And when you're right, I like to give you good exits as well. You know what they say, things like, show me the money. Well, I just did, all right? Go ahead, make my day. Again, you got to know your limitations as a trader and realize that, hey, we're in it to win it, like Roku. Nailed it. Boom. Flawless victory. Cha-ching. If I were size, if I were Johnny Holmes, this guy, I'd put in 38.25. If I were along 1,000. I'd lock in that 55 cent profit that we're current. Now we're up 65 cents. 65 cent winner so far. We bought a bit late, but hey, we didn't keep that out of a keep keep us away from the trade for that reason. This is a great chart. AMD's kind of grinding up here. I'm going to tighten up my long on X to just above the previous day's high. And the reason is, for those of you who know anything about quants and algorithmic trades and dark pools, you know that previous day's highs and lows are key institutional buy and sell triggers. So the Boolean operator is, you know, if current price, if CP is greater than or equal to PDH, the previous day's high, then they start to buy. So now is probably a good bounce play, like right now. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm just going to buy it right now. So I just put in a 50 share market order for X because I want to use a tight stop. And if I wait for the 58, so it may not give me that. So I'm going to use 20.10 as my stop in case it goes down. That's a riskier entry, and it may stop me out, but my thinking, the thought process is we have several green candles in a row on the pivot, which I like, and it had been a previous gap up, which I like. There's been some previous strength in it, so and the price that proves the trade wrong. But think about it, friends. Where, you know, how do you manage risk in a way that makes sense? and keeps you in on the best charts with some some level of consistency and develop your own process test things out you know that's why I'm a big fan of small share trades cuz it gives me a chance to 
do like I, I did over 2,200 trades in the last three and a half months alone to be able to test out hundreds of different entry and exit strategies and benefiting from that. And more importantly, the thought process behind it is what you'll get here as a member of Trading the Open. Now, hopefully this little dip buy doesn't go against me, but if it does, it's 30 cents. I did take a stop on 30 of my 50 shares of VXX. My Labu is still alive. It's well, what, 41.90? Got my stop is at 40.80, so about a point down. AMD that stops in 19.30, it's currently in 19.77, so that's trending up. AXSM still open. Roku stop is still open. We'll see where they go. Nailed the bounce. Cha-ching! And you know one thing that helps is you can use these entries for swings as well as intraday. And I developed a new chart system where we've got the 22 SMA on a six month chart. We've also got the MACD for MACD pivots, like we saw here. And we also have the ADX, which I'm an expert in, which I've taught for many years. And looking for volatility using the average Wilder's average directional index is another strategy tip that we like to bring to bear here for our members. You can see what I like about the Roku, and one of the reasons I, I bought it this morning is because it recovered that 22 SMA, and it's up here currently, right near 38.22. Anyway, you can see here also we had a MACD pivot, so that gave strength to the bounce, you know, about a week or so ago. Or if you're looking at ETFs and ETNs. TNA is bouncing. I like this T triple Q, which if it ever gets over the 85 cent mark, I'll get filled on, which looks like it will. It's starting to bounce as well. So we've got remarkable volatility and volume and breakout potential in these charts, whether you're looking at swing trading charts like this one, or if like me, you like day trading as well as swing trading and you're trading instruments like this Labu. we got this simply remarkable volatility in the markets, and our goal is to capitalize on it here with you. Let's see why I bought the Labu. Mostly because it's going way up. I'm going to tighten in the stop to 41.80 break even on the boo now. Well, actually, I'll do 41.90. So now I tighten up my stop on the LABU to break even. And the reason for that is I like to use relatively tight stops. I'm an expert at break even stops by necessity. And I hope to teach you that once you join me here at Trading the Open as a regular member. Like that very intelligent, well-reasoned entries and exits that make sense. So I bought it at 41.80. It ran up 60 cents, which is cool. If I were in large size, by the way, I'd trail a stop at 42.15. because so I'd like to lock in at least a 35 cent profit. But as it is, since I'm only in from just 30 shares, I'm putting a stop at break even or slightly above break even by 10 cents. So. At least it covers the commission, right? In small size, that's what you want to do is get to a place initially as an intelligent rules-based trader 
where you're tightening in entries and exits in a way that it makes sense. I'm going to tighten in the stop on this guy to 1955. Because I paid 1970 for it, so I don't want to take more than a 30, 40 cent stop. So, so again, that's $15, $20 stop loss. Tis but a scratch. For those are your fellow Monty Python fans. Your bloody arms off. You don't want to be the, the, the knight of the round table that has your bloody arm off. You want to take itty bitty scratches as a trader. I like the difference between offensive and defensive trading. Like a sports metaphor, you're looking to be the defense and play it pretty intelligently. So you're trading charts like this one that has spectacular volatility and trading volume uh, that can do extremely well for you. I had alerted you folks to this way back when it was 35, 36 this morning, pre-market. I bought it in market. It's still in the money and going up. I like that. I like charts that go up. So I'm long Roku and AMD. I got stopped out on the IQ. That's okay. X, I bought the bounce. It's still holding steady. I'll be selling it if it takes out low of day breakdown. AKO looks uninteresting right now, so I'll, I'll put it in the longer main watch list for upcoming later this week if it runs up for our members. But if it, if it has not hit an entry trigger that I want to purchase it at by 10.15 or 10.30 at the latest, I will usually cancel the order unless it's an extremely volatile chart. And the reason for that is good trades are usually right from the start and they usually hit by 10 o'clock or 10.30 at the latest. There's plenty of other ones here. I don't want to get us too scattered with tons of different charts, but I do like to cover the best ones like the Roku for you. Good point, Trey, saying I like how you're being selected by not taking the bounce due to lack of range. Right. The range is everything. So big range charts are the right. If you do play bounces, big range charts are the way to go. Like this guy, right? This is a big honking range. This was a $2 stock yesterday. Then it became an $8 stock way up at the sky uh, earlier this morning. We didn't buy it yet. My long trigger's up at where the $0.65 cent mark. further it goes down, the more I want to tighten this in. So and by the way, another quick advanced strategy that you never learn anywhere else except for me or my competitors who are watching this and will now start to copy me incorrectly and get traders in trouble, uh, but there, there's a sequence of things that you need to do that I teach traders on how to set up order flow using nickels and eight cent entries, not just the even dimes. And there's a reason for that, right? So I'm tightening in my entry on AXSM to 6.18. There's a reason for that. And I explained to my members during our member sessions what those reasons are. Another reason to join, because there's a lot of these advanced professional day trading strategies that you don't learn from these kids that were in diapers when I was trading, right? I'll be 55 on the 19th of January. I'm getting old. Or older, but... Older and hopefully wiser after doing tens of thousands of trades and millions of dollars worth of trades, which I've done as much as 4.9 million worth in a single year. So many millions over the 20 years I've been trading. There's a lot to learn. Anyway, so my long trigger in this puppy's 618. So it's like, hey, if it gets over the eight, over the six whole number, 
It'll be interesting. I want to dodge a false breakout, say between six and six ten. So my long trigger is up at six eighteen. Even the dog agrees. That's this little Shih Tzu. She's all a 10 pounds sop and wet, and she's noisy as heck. Anyway, Roku, baby. Boom, I told you that was the best chart of the day pre-market. Did I not? I did indeed. Congratulations if anyone took my 37.7 long call. Over 60 cents in the money. And again, I was kind of late to the party on this guy, but I wanted to wait till after the opening bell. And it's still up almost a point for us. That's why you need to join me at tradingtheopen.com. Now, if you're not yet a member, I do have the uh, special, like the, until the end of January deal for just 97 bucks for, you know, every single day between now and January 31st. That's, you know, four weeks or three and a half weeks. Uh, and that's at tradingtheopen.com forward slash new year. There's a kind of a pop-up window at the top of the tradingtheopen.com main website that also directs you there. Or if you want, just join for the year. It's it's only, what, 1997 for a whole year of access with me. So good way to learn. A lot cheaper than coming to a live seminar, which I used to do. My live seminar is like 1500 bucks for two days. And I usually get, what, 30, 40 people in uh, for those. But I know most of us don't, including myself, don't feel like standing and talking and going places for days on end. So Instead, you can learn here from the comfort of your own home. Look at the performance of my alerts. Winner. And a break even. IQ was a stop. US still starting to bounce. Labu was a winner. Cha-ching. Flawless victory. Somewhat 80% winners today with real money trades. Compare that. And on, when I screwed up and I was... I got stopped out in IQ is only like a $20 stop loss, right? And I'm really keen on being a friend, on being a colleague of yours, of being somebody you can trust like so many thousands of people have. Honest, real trades. Most are in the money. Complete transparency with 100% of my order flow displayed for your review. You know, completely open and honest about things. There's days where I have mostly stops. There's days where it's kind of some of both. Or days like today where it mostly wins. And so there's a mix. And I like to be very conservative and be a good role model. My, my main goal is to keep you guys out of trouble and be a good role model to teach you how to trade small shares the right way. So when you're in the money, that's great. And you're not going to make like $5,000 a day with this approach, but the goal is to keep you out of trouble so you don't take big stops either. And at least teach you effective risk management and pattern recognition skills in a very conscientious, thoughtful approach with stocks like this one that continue to skyrocket up for us. I'm going to tighten up the stop to 42.40 on this. Trail a stop at 42.40. Let's lock in a profit. So what that did was cancel the original order and then put in a tighter exit on the current order. So I'm going to sell it all if it gets right here. So I'm in Labu from 4180. I'm going to lock in a 60 cent profit if it gets back to 4240. And if it finds its its way and keeps running on up, good for us. But I at this point I want to start locking in profits because we're getting closer to 1030 and that's a sensible place to See, as soon as I put that in, it'll immediately drop and fill. And that's that's good. Good timing, right?
I'm tightening in a stop on Roku to 38.4. It's lock and load, baby. I got you in a 37.7. Let's lock in that 70 cent profit, all right? And if I was large size, I'd sell it all now. This is pulling back off. We got a bearish engulfing. For more on candlesticks, be sure to learn from my colleague Steve Nissen at www.candlecharts.com because this stuff actually works. Amazing. Bearish engulfing, a loss of the bearish engulfment, which it did technically take out right there as a sell signal. So if I were a large size, I'd be all cash right this second. I'd sell it all. I'm only in 50 shares, so I get a little more breathing room, 38.40. But at least I still make a nice 70 cent profit on the trade. And please compare my performance, intelligence, rules-based trading approach, the careful thought with which I explain why I got in, why I trailed the stop, why I take initial stops like I, I got stopped out in IQ for like a $20 stop loss and a break even, and that's fine. But I had nice big winners in Roku and Labu, right? Those are the two biggest breakout charts so far. And I got a small stop in VXX. So I took two teeny, teeny, tiny stops, but my winners are bigger than the stops. I still have 20 shares alive in VXX in case it comes back to life. T triple Qs, I never did get the order fill. My long signal, 3885, I'm now going, I'm tempted to cancel the order, but because it's in context of a reasonably strong uptrend, I'll leave the order in place. I've got a 50 share buy stop order, and if it takes out 3885, which it has not done yet, so I'll buy it if it takes that out. Well, let me know if any questions. I'm going to wrap up here uh, right now or in just a couple of minutes. But I wanted to thank all of you for being here. I hope that when you learn with me, you know, and we had some really good breakouts here. And the AMD's starting to get its, trying to get its party started. U.S. Steel Bounce is working out so far. Roku is really the story stock of the day, right? Really spectacular run. And now it's even in the process of trying to take out 39, as you can see in the tape. My sell stops 38.40. I'm going to tighten that to 38.6. Actually, I'm going to tighten that to 38.7, because I'm fine selling this top. I'm not going to sell a market. So my Labu, I, I locked in a profit on that and sold that. My Roku, I've got in 38.7. That's around 15 cents under the current inside marker, or 38, 38.87 by 8 on the inside. I'm going to sell it all if it gets back to 38.7, and that's a good intelligent place to exit. And the reason why I'm exiting there is because it's ran up so far today. It may still be good to 40. You know, we don't don't predict, just react. But because it's kind of a squeeze play, and this is a bearish engulfing too right here, by the way. Bearish engulfing, the technical sell would be under 38.6 where I had it. But I'm playing it tight because it's getting later in the day and it's bumping up right against a whole number of resistance late in the day. And it's got like a quadruple top here late in the day. So it's a good time to take the money and run. Because next thing you know, this guy may be back down to 36. And I wouldn't want that because I want to lock in a profit. So that's how I day trade. And I hope that it's instructive and I've given you good, honest, real money trade examples. At a couple of stops, but the wins are bigger than the stops. So that's good. And I want to make all the numbers work out. A question from Tim. Do I like the gush drip combo as a potential arb? I think I'm in gush a little bit. I have to check my portfolio list, but I like gush because that chart. 
This, by the way, friends, is a really, and I'm glad you asked. Thanks, Tim. This is a really good pattern because it had been $44 a share. Now it's way down at 10 and it's recovering the 22 SMA. And we have a, not a strong, but a okay uh, MACD pivot. I prefer it if it's bouncing off the floor, off the bottom. And our ADX is still up over 30. So that's good. But do you see that we're in that cool looking cursor is pointing right near the 10. It broke above the 22 SMA. So that's a buy signal for this guy. So maybe good for a swing. And yeah, I do like the fact that it's up here. If we look on the flip side of drip, you can see it did the exact opposite. It ran up and it broke under the green SMA line. Does everybody see that? So that's a sell signal. So I would not be interested in buying this guy unless it came back to life over 17 or if it sold all the way down to say six or seven a share and started to bounce. Right now it's kind of in the no man's land. So I wouldn't be trading, at least I'm not trading drip. Uh, but gush looks good. But yeah, that's a good idea for an art play. Let me see if I'm in gush. Yeah, but I'm only in 10 shares from a cost basis of 779 I bought it at. So, but only 10 shares. So, I'm going to put a 40 share buy order in right now. It's still only for a few hundred dollars worth of capital, but the upside is huge. So, thanks, Tim. I'm going to buy it at what, 1070? So if it keeps going up a little bit and then pulls back or sells off, that's fine. I don't get an order fill. But if it does skyrocket up to 12 or something today, I want to get the fill at 1070. So But thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, I had a little starter trade in just 10 shares. I think I had traded it long and it got stopped out on like 40 out of 50 and I let 10 shares ride. And now it's back to life and doing well. So I want to rebuy my shares at the 1070. So thanks. So this is more for a swing than for a day trade. And I like putting on these small under 100 share speculative bounce plays and instruments that have huge trading ranges and are showing some signs of recovery. My gosh, so thanks. Good stuff. Tim's one of my most valued recent members because he's smart, so thanks, Tim. I like working with smart people, don't y'all? That's why I stopped working in big companies because I just, the older I get, the le at least I have patience with, you know, stupid people or petty people or argumentative people or people that are general pain in the ass. So that's why I like trading because I, I'll have to deal with the charts and the business is a business I love because I'm working with like-minded, intelligent folks like you guys. This guy's starting to bounce AXSM. Did I get the fill? Let me see. Am I in? I am indeed in. It's the AXSM. I got the fill. And where would you guys put a stop? Trade it or fade it? Where would you put the stop? I got a 50 share order in. I bought wherever I said I was going to buy. 6.18. 6 I got the fill. It's likely still worth a bounce anywhere up until 6.5, by the way. So something to consider paper trading, right? I'm in a real money trade with just 50 shares. The price that proves a 50 share trade wrong. And I learned that phrase from Steve Nesson. What's the price that proves the trade wrong? I'd use, well, I'd say a loss of, a loss of 560 or so. But where, where would you guys put a stop on just 50 shares? And if you're in 1,000 shares, it'd have to be really tight, like 594 or something. But the price that I think proves a 50 share trade, and again, it varies depending on share size. Anything about using small initial sizes 
You don't have to sweat every nickel or every dime like you do when you're trading a thousand shares. Back when I was trading like a thousand shares on a trade, I would definitely sweat every 10 cents because that's, you know, a hundred dollars every dime. But if you're trading a fraction of that, the neat thing is you can build the trade and add to it if it keeps going up without the upfront risk that you absorb when you're trading huge size. That's what. So I put my stop in just now. So I think that's one thing I can really add value to your own personal approach is I do a lot of interactive quizzes. So tell me, I'm curious, where would you guys put a stop? I just got filled. It's against me a nickel or something, a big whoop. But, you know, there is some, it's a mean reversion pivot. It is a mean reversion pivot to pull back down to half to a whole number. I bought over the whole number because I like whole number pivots. But it may prove me wrong. And if it does so, I will stop out right here. I think that makes sense. I'm sure as heck not going to let it go all the way down here or something. And teaching you folks tight stops, do, do you think this can help you become a better trader with small share size, highly volatile, good, strong charts like Roku and this guy uh, with small stops? And I do cover selectively, you know, cheap stocks under $10 if they're really good like this one. This is only under $10 stock we covered today because that's the best looking one of the bunch, I can, what I can see. XSM, and that is the highest volume uh, entry. Hey, Bill, let's see. I got stopped at 635. No, for swing, I never use more than a couple of points. I use the loss of two day low, so probably somewhere down there, eight or nine a share. The gush stop would be, say, 840. Maximum stop on gush would be 840 because that's around 20 cents or so under the previous day's low. So it's about a two point maximum stop or two day low, which that it is both. But where I'm pointing right now is the price that would prove a swing trade wrong. So loss of two days low. If I were trading large size like 500 shares or 800 shares, I'd put the stop under the day's low. Let's say 950 would be maximum stop loss on a swing trade. But since I'm only buying uh, another 40 shares, I'll let it ride down here because I don't mind a, a couple of points on 40 shares. Tight stops are really important. Anyway, thanks so much for being here. I hope that I can see you all as members if you do want to consider learning with me. It's very much like a professional day trading seminar in a box every single day because I give you good, honest, in-depth, detailed training. And I like to give you good, you know, specific strategies that you don't learn anywhere else. Of course, my competitors all scribble down cheat notes to try and copy me, but they don't know the details of implementation and how to match it to the market condition. So even though they try and copy my tape reading and copy my breakout patterns and copy my gap continuation and bull flag breakout strategies and the rest of it, they don't get it right because they don't take into account the market conditions the relative strength of the S&P, the sectors, the VIX, the VIN, the trick, the, the VIX, the trend, uh, and the tick, and the rest of it like a good professional approach does. So I hope that uh, you want to join me, and I'll see you guys in Trading Open moving forward. Join now, www.tradingtheopen.com.